Welcome. In this CMMI Tech Talk, we are going to look at the different frameworks available and how the CMMI fits in. Before we dive into the topic of frameworks, we have some questions that might help to set the scene. Do you get confused with all the options that are out there? Do you find that you really don't have clear understanding of why you would use a specific framework over another? Are you confused about when you need to use a specific framework? And more to the point, do you think there are lots of duplications, overlaps, and conflicts with all the different types of frameworks? Do you know the difference between a model and a framework anyway? If you answered yes to any or all of these questions, you are not alone. The confusion surrounding which framework to use, why, and when affects virtually all organizations that want to improve their business performance. This is why at ISACA, the home of CMMI, we thought that it was about time we created this tech talk to help guide organizations such as yours with navigating the framework's quagmire. Let's start by looking at some of what is out there. Well, there are a lot. Maturity models, ISO and other similar international, national, and local standards. Six Sigma, Scrum, SAFE, Scaled Agile Framework, COBIT, DevSecOps, Regulations, Agile, Waterfall, Safety Standards, Security Standards, Improvement Life Cycles, the list goes on and on. It's easy to see why the topic often leaves people confused and overwhelmed with the choices. The truth is, navigating your way through the frameworks can be straightforward when you remember that all of them can be categorized as one of three possible types. Let's look at these three framework types and discuss the business drivers for why you would use each one and how they can be used together. Each model or framework type has a primary purpose. There's the capability layer, which also includes maturity models such as the CMMI. There's the compliance layer, which includes regulations and standards such as ISO standards and... There's the methodology layer, which includes methods, techniques, and approaches such as Scrum, Agile, Waterfall, ITIL, and Six Sigma, to name a few. First, let's look at the maturity models. These define the characteristics of best practice that are necessary for a business to achieve its performance targets. Maturity models, with the CMMI being the world's most well-known and widely used model, are used in two ways within the capability layer. As a guide when addressing business performance improvement, descriptive versus prescriptive approach best practices on what to do, not on how to do, to allow flexibility, and as a reference frame when benchmarking business performance, typically through an independently verifiable performance benchmark appraisal. In this way, maturity models help to identify the problems space an organization may be encountering as it carries out its business activities. They are also used to measure the effectiveness of the solution that is eventually put in place. Maturity models answer the questions, how capable is my organization in achieving what it wants to achieve? What is my overall maturity level compared to other organizations? How does my maturity or capability equate to improved performance and better capability? Next, let's look at the standards. These define the criteria for quality that are pertinent to a specific domain as the work is being carried out. Standards, with ISO standards being amongst the world's most commonly used ones, are used in two ways within the compliance layer. In one way, they are used to define the minimum quality criteria within a specific domain. And in another way, they are used as a reference when compliance is being evaluated typically through an audit. Standards and audits against them attempt to answer two questions. 
How repeatable is the quality as my organization is carrying out the work? How compliant is my organization with the standard? Finally, let's look at the methodologies. These define discipline-specific approaches, methods, or techniques. Each methodology is developed to be specific to the domain it applies to. For instance, in the world of software development, one of the most prevalent approaches currently being used is Agile, with Scrum being a specific Agile methodology. Another example is ITIL, which is a set of detailed practices for IT service management. Methodologies provide an approach to solve a problem within a specific domain or discipline. They provide techniques, proven methods, and an asset base to start from and build on. As you can see from the different layers and main purpose each one addresses, all three layers are necessary. Each of the layers addresses a different business driver, meaning that it is completely possible and very realistic that an organization would be using different models, standards, and methodologies all at the same time. Let's look at the business driver for why you would use a maturity model like the CMMI. Let's look at some of the key business drivers for using CMMI as a maturity model. For example, let's say your business develops software. You know your clients well. You know the business sector you operate in. You definitely know your product. How else could you be sustaining a business operation? And yet, despite all these knowns, from time to time, you experience cost and schedule overruns. Often, there are issues of quality with the products you develop and deliver. These usually result in uncompensated rework, leading to overtime and increases in your overheads. You want to solve these issues quickly so you can get back to doing what you do best, developing products and securing new business. The temptation would be to adopt a new methodology with the aim of solving your issues and challenges. You do a literature search and find that your industry peers are adopting a new system, tool, or technique. Perhaps if you also adopt them, you'll address your issues and challenges. But let's stop and think this through. Is it the best approach for your organization to adopt a new methodology? How do you really know one of these new things will actually improve your capability and performance? Adoption means an investment in the capital cost of bringing the tool or technique into your organization. There are also ongoing costs, which include licensing, training, and adoption. What most organizations forgot to factor into this analysis is the potential for lost corporate knowledge as you adopt the new tool or technique and stop doing business the way staff is familiar with. Employees start leaving the company and the turnover rate is higher than normal and keeps increasing. Employee survey results show that morale has dropped from the previous year. You can't help but think that the introduction of the new tool or technique may have contributed to this loss of corporate knowledge, but the employees have stated in exit interviews that they are leaving for personal reasons or to advance their careers. And of course, you're going to have to recruit and train new staff to compensate for the loss of personnel. This in turn is going to drive your costs up as you rebuild the lost corporate knowledge. If this example sounds familiar, you're not alone. Most organizations face these issues at least once. It's not uncommon for an organization to go through these issues on a regular basis. Does this mean you shouldn't adopt a new tool or technique? Not at all. You should always assess what else is out there and if you can benefit from its adoption. But before you invest in adopting the new tool or technique, you should first identify what aspects of your business practices, processes, and procedures are leading to the issue and challenges you are facing. Just as importantly, you also want to know what is working well for you so you can safeguard that from being lost when you adopt the new tool or technique. 
That's where a maturity model like the CMMI comes in. You can use it to help identify the size and nature of your problem space and make a defendable decision based on data. Then, as you adopt the new tool or technique, you can use the CMMI as a guide to make sure you roll out your improvements correctly and verify that you meet or exceed your improvement objectives. Finally, once you've finished adopting the new tool or technique, you can use the CMMI to benchmark the effectiveness of the improvement. If you get this scenario, then you totally get the key business driver for using a maturity model such as the CMMI within the capability layer or purpose. Thank you for joining us for the CMMI Tech Talk. If you are wondering where to go from here, there are several useful resources listed below. If you haven't done so already, we encourage you to get in contact with an ISACA partner who will be able to tell you more about how to get started with a CMMI-based improvement program. You will also find useful resources on the use of the CMMI, including several case studies in our resource center. The Organizational Behavior Toolkit can help your organization see how ready it is for change. You can also find some links for additional CMMI Tech Talks to discover more about getting started on your CMMI-based improvement journey. Questions or need help getting started? Please contact support.isaka.org.